Today we're going to be talking about Parsha's Chai Sarah. Um, of course, this Parsha begins after Sarah Imenu passes away. Um, and the, uh, the, the opening verse is actually begins with a very interesting word. It starts off, Vayiyu Chai Sarah. And this was Sarah's life. The word Vayiyu, uh, our rabbis explain to us in Mesechet Megillah, it's a, it's a variation of the word Vayi. Over there they actually speak about the word Vayihi, but the Vav at the end here just is, is to make it plural. Um, but really it's the same word as Vayihi. The Orachim explains that it, it, it's, the same, it's the same Lashon as Vayihi. Now over there the rabbis explain to us that every time you have the word Vayihi anywhere in Tanakh, anywhere in Scripture, so it's a reference to something big that happened, something uh, very important. And it's either going to be something very joyous or something, you know, very sad, some, something that's very troublesome for the Jewish people. So over here, we have to appreciate uh, how that plays out. Why Torah shifts and uses the word vayihi, which is an indication of either something very good or very bad. Anyhow, so vayihu chayisara, and this, this was Sarah's life. So it says, mea shana ve'etzrim shana ve'sheva shanim, that she lived 127 years. And then the pastor concludes, shenei chayisara, the years of Sarah's life. Now, there were a few questions we want to bring out in this, uh, in this uh, verse, which will help us appreciate it and understand what's really going on about Sarah's life, and, 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 you know, and we'll learn some lessons how it applies even to, to ourselves as well. So w- what sticks out uh, is uh, on, a, on a simple level, and the Mepharshim speak about it, Rashi talks about it, and other commentaries have what to say, is that the verse is a little bit longer than it needs to be. It, it really repeats itself. Um, it says that this is Sarah's life. She lived 127 years. That's all we need to say. But at the end, uh, nonetheless, the, the, the verse repeats and says the years of Sarah's life. Shenei chai Sarah again. So that last keta, shenei chai Sarah is extra. What also uh, comes out a little bit peculiar, not as boldly as this entire phrase that's repeated, but a little bit more subtly, is the interesting rep- you know, repetition of the phrase, the life of Sarah. Because we start off saying Chaye Sarah, and the verse concludes by saying again the exact phrase Chaye Sarah. The life of Sarah, the life of Sarah. So both of these ideas, the, the, the double repeat of Chaye Sarah and the extra phrase Shnei Chaye Sarah, really can be teaching us a similar idea. It's sometimes there's more than one way to get to the same end result. Let me first explain to you how the famous rabbi, the Chatam Sofer, gets to this conclusion, but, and then I'll in, in add the way I would like to get to the conclusion. Hopefully there's room for b- both of the pshatim in the Torah world. Um, so, Shenei Chai Sarah, although it means the years of Sarah's life, according to Midrash Tanhuma, the word Shenei, which is years of, is also the same letters of the word she- Sheni, sh- two, twice, uh, double. So he explains that this Shenei Chai Sarah, based on this Tanhuma, is a reference to uh, the idea of a, some type of way of appreciating and understanding the double life of Sarah. Like Sarah had somehow two lives. How that, what that means, we, we'll, we'll hopefully expand on and explore throughout the, uh, the class. That's how the Khatam Sofer explains this idea of a double life of Sarah. The same idea that I also noticed in the verse, I'd like to explain from the other angle by the repetition of the word Chaye Sarah twice could be also a remez to the same idea. I'm only repeating it here because since that's the way I you know, came up with the idea, I'd like to share the way, the way I you know, came up with it also to add to, hopefully, you know, the body of, of Torah here. So again, chaye sarah, chaye sarah. The question would be, why do we have to say the, word, the phrase chaye sarah twice? So it's coming to teach us about the idea of, in some way, the double life of Sarah. Okay, so that's one point we have to try to appreciate. Um, another question brought out is really, you know, the, the name of the Parsha, it's Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah. But interestingly, if we look at the story, it's, she's already passed, passed away when this whole Parsha starts. So why title an entire Parsha, the life of Sarah, if she's not living anymore? Uh, one could have answered in a simple list of senses that, um, well, that's, you know, it's like when someone passes away and you want to tell, tell a story about their life, so... You know, the, this is, you make a book about a very special person, a very famous person, and we call it the life of so-and-so. And that would be fine. The problem is that this really, Parsha doesn't really get into a repeat of her life events. So, so the title would fit if we talked about her life and her, her whole life history. But since we really just go forward with the story of Chumash, so the, the title is, is out of place. That's why uh, you know, I found one of the commentators that he brings up this, this question. Another point that I would like to connect all this to is, again, how it applies to us. 
since Sara Imenu is, for, for, for all intents and purposes, the first righteous Jewish person that passes away, of course, Avram and Sarah, the father and mother of the Jewish people, uh, I mean, we have Adam and Noah and other righteous people that have passed away prior to, to Sarah, but she's really the first Jewish person that passes away. So based on a principle that when we, we see, when Hashem makes an example of one particular case, for example, here of Sarah, so it could be to teach about everyone as well. So the lessons that we will see in her passing away, we will also apply to our own lives as well, all of the Jewish people. Uh, this is one of the 13 principles of the Torah, actually, which by way of darshaning on it, we can connect it to people also, the Jewish people. It says that when, when a particular item is taken out of its general principle to be highlighted, it's not only to teach about itself, but about the entire general principle. So that would apply like this. Since Sarah was one of the Jewish people, she was part of the, the Klal Yisrael, the body of the Jewish people, and we took her out and spoke about her death, so in doing so, we spoke about her and everyone else also. All of the Klal Yisrael at the same time, the Torah is speaking about as well, through Sarah. Okay, with all that in mind, let us hopefully continue now with the, some of the answers. Um, okay, actually, before we get to the answers, I left one point out. Actually, probably the most important point could be, the word Vayihiyu is a very special word, very special word, in that if we read it, it reads backwards and forwards the same way. The letters, again, without the nukudot. So vayu is what we call in English a palindrome. Um, this is a very interesting nuance, and uh, we find precedence that when the Torah has such a type of a word, it can be explained a lesson out of it. We see it with a very famous word, vinatnu, which means, and they gave. It's the same letters, and the very big obvious lesson with vinatnu is that giving charity. When you give charity, so you receive in return. And that's the lesson with Vinatnu. Here too, that Vayihiyu, the word that introduces Sarah's life, the, you know, the life of, that it reads both ways, we want to try to appreciate it and understand. Uh, truth is, after I noticed the, this idea of the, both reading two ways, I found in one of the very well-known, you know, a safer from one of the very well-known authors of many Sfarim, the Chida, Rabbi Chaim Yosef Davar Azula, one of the greatest Sephardic uh, rabbis and Kabbalists and also halachic authorities, he brings in one of his commentators, commentaries on, on, on Chumash also that this is a palindrome. And he explains it, of course, there according to his, uh, in a different idea, but we'll, we'll still use this idea. So what can we gain from all of that, what we said? So essentially, we know that the rabbis in, in, in Perkiavo teach us that when a, when a, what is the purpose of coming into this world? So person might think that, you know, they come into the world to have a good time, you know, make the most of your life, right? You know, when, when a person comes to, uh, uh, you know, to make an audition for some kind of a role, he has, you have five minutes, you do your best and you're going to get the part. So we come into this world and we want to, you know, make our best mark. We want to, you know, make our mark in this world. Well, it, unfortunately, really it will depend on what kind of mark we're trying to make if we end up wasting our time or not. So the rabbis want to warn us and help us from making a huge mistake. If a person thinks that this world is a purpose unto itself, he'll come into this world and seek pleasure. And whether he gains it or not, he'll either be happy or sad, and that's it. The end, when the end of his life comes, so he game over. You know? But that's only if we lived one life. We know that the Jewish people are taught, our Torah teaches us that you come into this world, really, it's only in order to earn your place in the world to come. And that this is really only uh, you know, part one of our, the, the bigger story of the Jewish people, and really of the purpose of creation. How so? So the rabbis there teach us that, you know, by way of analogy, they say that this world, the whole entire world and all the fun we're going to have and all of the things we're going to try to accomplish really is almost like when you're you know, going through a corridor, a hallway that leads you to a banquet hall. And with that in mind, let's appreciate. Imagine you're invited to your best friend's wedding and, you know, you, you can't wait for the celebration. And when you get to the, to the place where the wedding is being held, you end up getting stuck in the hallway and spend your entire time in the hallway and never go to the wedding, actually. Would that make any sense? Absolutely not, obviously. So that's what some people do when they come into this world. They spend all their time involved in this world, forgetting that, that really the purpose was to get to the banquet hall, the, the party that's coming after the lifetime here, which is really Olam Haba. Now, what is Olam Haba? So there are two explanations that we use the term Olam Haba. Olam Haba, in a bigger sense, is what comes after 6,000 years that we're going to try to perfect ourselves in the world. So then we're going to merit... Mashiach will come and there'll be Tchiat HaMetim and we will live happily ever after. That's the ultimate world to come. The seventh millennia, 
a world that's completely going to be Shabbos, and we're going to have, a, you know, that's then. Uh, but another use of the term Olam Haba is really a world that comes also, the, the translation, the next world, the world that comes after this world, is a world where our souls go when we're done living in this world. Meaning when a person dies, he goes to the next world, Olam Haba. Now, based on the person's productivity in this world, whether he made the right mark or not, as we mentioned, so he'll either go to a place to be punished, where souls go to suffer, you know, to be cleansed from sin, uh, Gehenom, you know, purgatory, or he will merit to go to Gan Eden. The Garden of Eden is a term we give to the soul, where souls bask in the, uh, you know, the beauty of God's uh, revelation of light, and it's a beautiful place, it's, and he gets rewarded for the good that he did in this world then, as a soul. So those are two places where we could go when we're done with our lifetime. So now, let's appreciate everything we mentioned in the beginning. When we say that this is called the life of Sarah, this Parsha is called the life of Sarah, and we repeat that Chai Sarah twice, so the lesson is obviously that when you stop living a physical life in this world, it's not the end. It's just a transition. We go to the very next world, which is the world to come, and either we'll have merit or we'll have to pay for our sins, but that's the idea of the double life of Sarah. In Sarah's case, of course, she was a tzaddeket. She was a very righteous uh, person, and she went straight to Gan Eden. We have a precedent in different writings when the tzaddikim that are on this level of perfection, so there's no point in suffering. They don't have to go to Ganem to suffer, so they go straight to Gan Eden. Um, so we see in Sarah's case that when she passed, this, passed away from this world, she went right away. Her life continued in Gan Eden right away. And so we can appreciate now that the word Vayihiyu, which means we said it can mean either something very good or something very bad. So here in her case, it's great, great joy because she's going to Gan Eden to have all the benefit and pleasure of that world. And that's, so that helps us appreciate, uh, in, in connection with Sarah at least, how this verse works. Now, the truth is we didn't really touch yet on how it reads both ways. For that, um, we're going to get to a bit later, but now let's take the same verse and, and apply it to ourselves. Now, not everybody comes into this world and, and succeeds in being perfect like, like the tzaddikim. So by us, it actually comes out where we have the double reading more or so. Meaning a person comes into this world and he makes his choices based on his per perception of things, his perspective, and he thinks that he's making the right choices as he makes his choices. So a person will decide that money is the most important thing or fun is the most important thing or being handsome or beautiful and he spend his whole life building up his appearance to look one way when really life and uh, aging works against him but he'll, he'll just work harder and harder and he'll try to even the day, on the, the day he dies at 120 look as nice as he can without ever really paying attention to his neshama inside so what happens is his physical body he worked on that it should look very nice and it gets buried and uh, you know decays and so he accomplished nothing and his soul that he paid no attention to goes to the next world with nothing as, even worse if he's going to do sins so his soul goes very ble blemished so according to this, we can appreciate the vayiyu that reads one way for the average person is that he chose what he felt was the good life. And he may have attained a happy life. But at the end of his life, when he's going to be judged, and he's going to see that he made the wrong choices, and he made many mistakes, and he made many sins, so looking back on his life, he's going to be very sad. And he's going to actually suffer tremendously. So the vayiyu that reads forward can be an indication of the temporary fun he try to attain, but the Vayayu reading backwards is going to be an indication of the suffering that comes when a person makes the wrong, the wrong choices. Okay? The, in Sarah's case, it's the opposite. Because in Sarah's case, we say that the Vayayu, going, Vayayu reading forward is, in, is an indication of suffering. Because if we look at her actual life, she suffered a lot. You know, in the very beginning of her life, she wasn't able to have children. First, actually, first off, she lived in a place of idol worship. Then her father was killed. Then she couldn't have children. And then when she finally, you know, they moved, they had to run on the, not run, but they had to travel on the road, not being settled. And then, then when Avram has, takes a, a second wife of Hagar, so she just torments Sarah, her, her really, which she was a, shif, she really torments Sarah. Then when she has a child, Ishmael, when Hagar has a, a son first, you know, so that she just becomes very haughty and even gives her more suffering. Finally, when she finally has a, a son, Yitzchak, so Yishmael's trying to kill him, then they get rid of them. So she didn't have, you know, the, the classic, you know, quote-unquote good life as she lived. But that we're also taught. Hashem brings suffering upon the righteous, 
in order to give them the ultimate reward later. So in Sarah's case, the Vayeyu reading as she lived was, was actually involved a lot of suffering. So, but when she, look, look, looking back, when she passed away, and she's judged for her deeds, so since she had only good deeds, so the, looking back in her life, now she can see all the good that came out of her life, and of course all of the good that's going to be in the second life that she lives in, in, in uh, Gan Eden. So that's the way we would appreciate it for, uh, in Sarah's case, not, not to mention the, the regular person. Um, so with this, I think that we should take a very, very strong lesson to ourselves, meaning that we all cannot escape. No one can escape the, yom of, the day of judgment. And again, if we can think we're going to fool ourselves, you know, ignorance is bliss is a saying, but let's be honest, how long does that bliss last? So you could be unaware of the suffering and un unaware of the truth and think that you're going to just, you know, hide and do what you want and have fun. But, uh, you know, like, for example, if someone unfortunately has a disease of cancer and he doesn't know about it, so he was ignorant to it and he had a good time, but when the news comes, the news comes, you can't hide from it. So we can think that we'll live through our life and, you know, avoid tomorrow. Well, tomorrow we'll, we'll forget about it. We'll put it in the back of our heads and forget about it. And we'll have fun. And we'll, even at the cost of doing things that are against what Hashem wants. So we can't escape that. Just like we see that, you know, when a person dies, he goes to be judged by Hashem and he will get his ultimate... Uh, payback. So we have to try to be aware of it now and learn the lessons that we can from Sarah and that are really hinted to in this, in this week's Parsha. If we will be smart and do the, make the right choices now, we can save ourselves from a lot of suffering later. So may we be successful in making our life count, make our real mark, and hopefully we'll get that part. You know, we're all auditioning over here for a part. You know, I, of course, want to be the leading man or the well, maybe the garbage man. Whatever you end up being, whether it's the leading man or the, or the garbage man, but as long as you live a life doing what Hashem wants, you've, you've succeeded. You get your part and you get your place in, in the world to come.